What's up, everybody? I'm Russell Taylor, and welcome to Silversations, where I talk to artists that engage the world through the black lens. So today I'm in Washington, D.C. at Union Market. If you're ever in the city, make sure you stop by, grab a cup of coffee, and grab a little bite to eat. It's a really cool place to go in the city. But today, most importantly, I am hanging out with my dear friend, Cy Smith, writer, producer, actress, singer, all of these things. And you can catch her from Carnegie Hall to the Kennedy Center to the Symphony at Moscow. She is a tremendous artist. And today we have her in Washington, D.C. on the Silversation couch. Stand by, check out the interview. This is Silversations. Let's go. Ms. Cy Smith, welcome ah, to Silversations. You. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's my <laughs> absolute pleasure. So ah. let's get to this talking, sis. All right. All right. I have a question, which is one of the most important questions. Okay. Where are you from? Well, I was born in New York City, and I was raised here in D.C., Maryland, kind of all over. You know, I think we moved from New York to Southeast. Mm -hmm. We lived over near like Minnesota and C Street in that mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it just seemed like we, my mom and I moved around a lot. So, you know, in fact, I went to elementary school right down the street from here. Oh. I went to Naylor Road Private School. <laughs> so it was how was it coming up for the interview? You were to, you had mentioned that it oh was a bit cathartic. Yeah, it was a, it was crazy because I hadn't been in this area in a really long time, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and as soon as I you know came off the parkway and and hit Naylor Road, I mean, just all the memories came flooding back. You mm -hmm. know, it was a little private school that was mostly black, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, that you know that was sort of my foundation. You know. Um, and I think that school kind of spoke a lot to how I came up, period. You know, even when I moved and changed schools, you know, over and over, Naylor Road kind of set the, set the premise for me, you know, and the trajectory, I think, for how I um, socialized and how I learned, you know. One of the things, uh, because the, this component of Solversations, we're focusing on DMV connected, DMV raised yeah. artists. And one of the running themes is that being from the DMV, D, DC being the center, yeah. but Chocolate City is not just, you know, a fun name. There is a foundation of being around people that look like you, right. share culture and right. how that starts to build your formation, yeah. your foundation. Yeah. So how does being from the DMV show up in your life and in your music even? Oh my gosh. It shows up in my music pretty, you know, regularly and profoundly. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, you can't even mention Cy Smith in Los Angeles without somebody mentioning Go-Go because I've done so many Go-Go's in LA, you know. Um, and I think even just to the point that I'm sort of a pocket singer. Oh, know? yeah. Um, like everything I do is based in a pocket, you know, and, and that comes from. Put my, it in the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> that comes from my musical schooling here. Mm -hmm. um, and I also, you know, the church foundation that I had here, I went to First Baptist on Minnesota and C Street. Again, Minnesota, Minnesota Avenue. Um, there was a certain foundation of, of socialization I got there, you know, outside of music, um, just the way I interacted with my with my folks, you know, mm -hmm. my friends, my elders, how I learned to, you know, speak in front of people. Yeah. You know, all of that Chocolate City plays a part in, you know, because I think wherever you meet somebody from D.C., we have a way that we kind of carry ourselves. And all of that comes from, you know, how we're schooled, you know. And I and I speaking of schools mm -hmm. real quick. Yes. Go ahead. Howard University. You better know it. You better <laughs> say it. H-U. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry to cut your train of thought, but I knew we had to. It was going to come one way or another. So. I, you know, but I, I do. I think there's a way that we hold ourselves everywhere we go. And, I, and it has to do with the fact that we come from a place where we're not the minority, mm -hmm. you know. So we so we we learn to take up space, you know, without feeling like we have to reduce ourselves or make ourselves less than or make ourselves smaller or, you know, I get it. Like we walk right into a room and, you know, and do that, you know, spread out because because it's ours to begin with, you know, and, that's, and, and, and no one has given it to us. Right. Right. So I think it's different than, you know, the than the way, you know, you might see someone carry themselves from someplace else. Right. You know, yeah. 
Spark of music. When did you know I I have to do this? <laughs> uh-huh. Like I'm go- everything else falls away, and this is what I'm going to do. It was a very specific and memorable moment for me. Okay, I went to see with my mother. Your arms too short to box with God at the mm-hmm. Warner Theater. Blackity, blackity, <laughs> black, black. <laughs> at the Warner Theater, mm-hmm. and Patty Labelle was in the show. Oh, and I was about. I she was in there. She was in the show. At, at least that night she was, mm-hmm. and I was probably about seven years old. And I don't know how my mom scored front row seats, but she did. We were in the front row, and this was my first musical and my first, you know, show and. Uh, 
Patti LaBelle comes out at the end during curtain call and sings, and she stands people up in the front row. She came right to me and stood me up and was singing, doing the Patty thing. And I looked into her eyes and I, and I knew right then and there, like, this is what I want to do. I want to get people up. I want to, whatever that thing was that she radiated inside of my body, I was like, yes, injected into my veins. That's mm -hmm. what I want to, you know, and that was the moment. And it, it's, it's strange because I knew I would never, ever sound like Patty LaBelle. You know what I mean? Like all the singers that I loved growing up, I, I knew I would never sound like them. But I knew that I wanted to be that or to have that kind of platform, you mm -hmm. know. And and so even if my I don't think my relatives even knew, you know, that that's what I wanted to do. But I, I held on to that memory in that moment. And I got to tell her that, too. How, you, how did how did that? Oh, she she loved that story. Yeah. yeah. Miss Patty. Is yeah. The best yeah. <laughs> so, um, if you were to describe your musical DNA. Mm -hmm. So Cy Smith's catalog, mm -hmm. when you step on stage, what is your DNA? My musical DNA, I would say uh, it's, a, it's a few chromosomes of, you know, funk. It's, it, it's, you, my musical DNA is like if Diana Ross and Sly Stone had a child. <laughs> That's what it is. I'm the, that combination, I think, you know. It's because um, Sly had the funk, which was very obvious, but he also had some rock and roll elements and some jazz elements, you know, and Diana Ross had all of the, you know, refined soul moments, you know, and that that sort of refined Motown thing. I think I'm a combination of all of that. I would add a little touch of jazz. I don't know yeah. who, yeah, yeah. but I would add some jazz because you give me a little bit of skip it up and do bop, bop, bop. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said Sly has yeah, jazz Yeah, he does have And it. so does Diana Ross. Diana Ross, definitely with the standards and stuff. Yeah, yeah I yeah, feel yeah. you. Right, with, with the standards yeah. and stuff, right. But totally, and I think the jazz element probably comes from just my mom playing a lot of, you know, Sarah Vaughn and Ella Fitzgerald, that kind of stuff around the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and I can't say jazz without talking oh. about Chuck Brown. I, I was going to say, because most of my early jazz schooling was from Chuck Brown's covering of so many standards, you know. That's a real thing, too, when it goes back to cultural and, like, how does D.C. show up? Because that's something, you know, I talked to Wes uh, in another episode and that we did talk about Chuck Brown. Mm -hmm. But go-go music is they repurpose standards. Right, right. And that's really important. It's too. really important. And, and and Chuck Brown was, I think, just single-handedly responsible for teaching a whole generation or two or three you know, just a bunch of standards. And mm -hmm. you can talk to anybody. Yeah, you can talk to anybody from DC who's about our age. Or right. Whatever, you know, and they'll. You know, mean 22? Yes. 22. Okay. <laughs> and, then, you know, and they'll be able to sing Moody's Mood word for right. word, you know, that kind of thing, you know, and that's because, you know, he, he taught us all of that. That's you know? really important. Yeah. Um, that's really important. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, how do you feel about. Black woman, black singer, mm. art activism. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, well, I can't speak about the election without speaking about Stacey Abrams, you know, for so as far as black women and the election, Stacey Abrams all day, that's the tweet. Big up. <laughs> Big up. As for uh personally, you know, where where politics or activism or social consciousness or awareness shows up in my art. I'm probably a little more abstract in the way that I talk about things like that. Um, I often make my my lyrics analogous, you know, to a situation. So, for instance, sometimes a rose will grow in concrete. The song that the title track to my album mm -hmm. is is really an ode to blackness, um, and it's really uh, about this sort of. Uh, concept of flowers popping up in places that are seemingly impossible to pop up in, right? Um, we Were Never Free is another song where I, I kind of speak uh, in, in analogies. And, and that's the concept of flowers growing in a big, beautiful field, and, and they have a network, you know, like trees and flowers talk to each other mm -hmm. via their roots. This is a real thing. And to pluck flowers up and just put them somewhere else for our own, you know, you know, personal enjoyment. I feel like that's what happened to black people. We were just plucked up from a continent and put somewhere to make that place more beautiful. 
you know, and make that place more functional and make that place work and, and disconnected from every, you know, everything we knew and disconnected literally from our ground, Mm -hmm. you know, and how we had to have to sort of reconnect and, and make our roots somewhere else, you know, um, that song, the, the lyrics go pretty little flowers, pretty little flowers brighten up my space. No one knows the horrors that brought them to this place, you know? So I think sometimes people as artists speak very literally, you know, and, but people like me, I'm, I'm all flowery. (laughs) I would say that that song is one of my favorite songs. Of course, you know what my favorite song of yours is. Camelot. Oh, thank you. Um, but the uh, this rose and concrete mm-hmm. is a brilliant um, way. I, you know, you, I find that artists, uh, myself included, we struggle sometimes because, mm-hmm. you know, the assumption is that because we are black artists and you know learned, if mm-hmm. you will, mm-hmm. that we have this responsibility leaped onto us that we 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 have to like in your face activate. Right. Um, but we also can be pretty about it and right. poetic right. and and craft a song that gives you the message. Yeah. I, I just so have as I have a song that is right in your face, but I yeah. want the option. I don't want I the want responsibility. The yeah. yeah. I want the option and and I just love language too much to not give myself the chance to speak in ways that can be construed all kinds of ways, depending on who's reading the words or hearing the words, you know? And that is an artist. (laughs) That is an artist. Sometimes a rose will grow in concrete Sometimes a cage bird will sing Sometimes the whole can be incomplete Sometimes the captive don't complain Sometimes the choosy have no options Sometimes the loser wins the fame Sometimes we'll never get no answers But still the questions will remain Sometimes the cure is in a flower Sometimes the lost will make their way Sometimes the killers are so gentle Sometimes survivors live in pain Sometimes we'll never get no answers The questions will remain
<laughs> so also, I would like to talk about COVID, which mm. is the nasty little person that is in everybody's room. Right. During COVID, how do you feel music, like our industry has changed. Mm -hmm. How do you think the new normal will be for us for music? Mm. That's a really good question. I don't, I don't know. It's like, I, I almost can't see that far into the future. I, I, I feel like COVID has made, for me at least, that I can only see into next month or next week, you know, because I just don't know what is going to happen. You know, I feel that you've done an excellent job uh, with you actually have inspired me and a couple of artists because you said, OK, I have this grand piano in my living room and <laughs> husband Sean. OK, let's grab a camera. Right. And oh, I got some lights. <laughs> I got a show in a week because I just got to see. That's, you know? that's, that's the thing. Yeah, I kind of made live streaming a thing for me because I need the platform. I need the stage, you yeah. know, like I literally put on a gown and walk around my house because I just like dressing up and doing, you know. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> I just like being on stage, right. you know. I like being amplified, you know, mm. because, you know, as a kid, as a little brown girl, you know, a lot of times we were just sort of invisible, mm -hmm. you know. And I like the opportunity to be seen, you know, and, and not only be seen, but be undeniably, you know, unignorable, you know. I, I'm here for it. <laughs> so, so yes. Yeah, so and, and so I had to embrace the technology and, and learn how to use OBS and learn how to, you know, get some web cameras and set up scenes and automate my cameras. And, you know, I had to learn how to do all of that um, and, and made it. And, and I needed the revenue. And you know, there's that, you know, I needed the revenue yeah. and, and people came along, people come, people will go if you kind of guide them, you know, the, the movie where they say, if you build, build it, it, they, they will, will come. come. It's, it's that kind of thing. Um, so I, I don't know if the future after COVID will keep live streaming as such a thing, but I think it might, you know, because I think people are, are getting used to it. People send me pictures where they are, uh, broadcasting my show on their big TVs. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, this might this might be something that we can get used to. Yeah. I I hope so. In which case, I'm going to have to enlist you to help me <laughs> get up to speed on that. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, but, I will gladly give you a tutorial. All right, Cy. Okay. So there's a rule to this question. The rule is we are speaking in affirmative. It is already so. Okay. So not no like conditional, oh, I want it to be if, no. none of that. Okay. It is already so. Okay. Years 2060. We will be only 40 years old at that time. <laughs> <laughs> what is Cy Smith's legacy? Uh, my legacy will is uh, that I have inspired a generation or two of young Black women. Uh, who saw me when they were kids and saw a girl up on stage with her natural hair, a big hair, a nappy hair, or whatever she decided to wear, uh, a free Black woman. You know, I inspired a couple of generations of Black women to be free, you know, like personally liberated, I think. I just got moved in my heart on that one. Really? Yes, because it was authentically so. <laughs> Amen. Thank well, you. thank you, Cy Smith. Thank you for coming and hanging out. You about to kill this set. Oh, my goodness. All the grandeur. Ah! You're going to sing my favorite song, Camelot. Thank Aww. you for joining us on Soulversations. I'm Russell Taylor. This is Cy Smith. She's about to kill the stage, y'all. Stay tuned.
to you Just keep believing And one day your love will come to find you And they just may appear closer Then they bring me on to you Just keep believing And one day your love will come to find you Thanks again for tuning in to Soversations, where we had a great conversation and some wonderful live performance from my friend, Cy Smith. Make sure you follow her on social media at Cyberspace. That's her S-Y-B-E-R-S-P-A-C-E. And check out more episodes. We have some really wonderful things coming, lots of great artists. And in Soversations, you can be sure to get a great live performance and also some cool questions through the Black Lens. Russell Taylor, come through, Soversations. Check us out. Let's go. Before you came along, I was finally living. I was stuck in one place while the world was moving. Love was just a game with the winners. Only losers I was losing. You brought me into the second color. You patched me up and fixed me like no other. Now we're face to face. Can you see me? Only you can see me. Yeah. Lightning round. Okay, so we have the lightning round. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to ask pretty fast. <clears throat> uh, first thing that comes to mind, five questions. Okay. Uh, five questions. Ready? Okay. All right. If you could see a live show, past, present, or future, who would it be? The Jackson Five. What's your favorite thing about DC? The way uh, brothers talk here. Yeah. I love example. I just love their accents. Young, yeah, just yeah, young, <laughs> mo, everything. I, I love just, it. It's so comforting. Dream collaboration, dead or alive? Raphael Sadiq. Ooh. <laughs> Who are you listening to right now? Uh, Cleo Soul is one person I'm listening to. Um, Brandy is another one, and Busta Rhymes new album a lot. <laughs> Hardcore. <laughs> okay. And what is a book that you cannot live without? My journal. Work. Because, like, yeah, that's where I write my affirmations. Okay, so I may have asked you only four or maybe five, but I feel like I want to do one more with you. What have you been doing during COVID? Has it been a creative time or self-care? Creative time is self-care for me. Um, so, yes. To, to answer that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Both. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for playing lightning round. <laughs> you, you exceeded my expectations. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Sai Smith. I appreciate you. <laughs> I'm ready for some more. Give me some more. <laughs>